Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another podcast episode. My name is Alicia Gogan, the host of the Glow Up Secrets podcast, where I help you expand your mind and become more self-aware so that you can glow up into the best version of yourself. Hello, how are we doing? I'm pretty sure this episode was coming out on Monday, so I'm just going to say it. Happy Monday. We made it to another week. Honestly, guys, I'm feeling really good despite being in my luteal phase. If you guys know, then you know. I get down bad on my luteal phase, but I did say, I have been mentioning that I really want to make an active effort to support myself, aka my mood, honestly, because I feel like my mood really swings right before I'm about to get my period during this time because I feel like you know, seeing my habits, some of them, even though they're okay, I know that some of my habits really do affect my mood and of course just affect your health and everything like that. So I wanted to really kind of like promise myself to do better, to do more, to really support myself, to see if it would make a difference during this time. But also I have just been so sick of being on this mood roller coaster. I don't even want to say emotional roller coaster, even though I guess that technically is the same. But I feel like the first half of the year, I have really struggled a lot with my mood and depression and feeling anxiety and things like that. And I've done a good job at supporting myself through everything. And I am always advocating to you know, give yourself the time you need to feel your feelings and ride out the ebbs and flows of life and, you know, really drop perfectionism and rebuild this relationship that you have towards yourself, unconditional love, all that kind of stuff. But for sure, I still see some habits that are for sure playing a role in my mood and playing a role in the things that happen in my life, even outside of my mood, which brings me to this topic of the episode, which is You are really only one decision, one, I know it feels hard, but one simple decision away from making the right decision. Now, the title of this video or this quote, I should say, I got it from Think Media Podcast. I forget the guy's name. There's like a few people who work on that team. If you guys are interested in starting a podcast or YouTube, things like that, the business side of things, I would definitely suggest checking them out. But he, I was listening to one of their podcasts and he was just talking about the journey of being a content creator and YouTuber and stuff and what differentiates people who win and people who lose essentially. And it's really the decisions that you're making on a day-to-day basis and the beliefs that you have Uh, about yourself and, and life and things like that. And I'm always talking about that. And he was talking about his journey and he said, I don't even know really what the story was, but he was just talking about how you are only one decision away from making the right decision. And in that moment, when I was on my walk listening to that podcast, it hit me so deep because I feel like people's words hit you deep depending on where you're at and what message you really need to hear if you're willing to listen. And that was the specific like week of me genuinely looking at the small and big decisions in my life that really dictate the rest of my day or my life. And I was like, it really is as simple. Like when you think about it, it is as simple sometimes as one decision will completely change your day. So I want to talk about some of the things that I have been recently doing in my life that have helped me really have a strength to be able to choose the new version of me, the new story, the new habit, the thing that's going to honor myself and my body and my life. And quite frankly, the decision that will either make or break my day. So the first thing is always a mindset before actually doing any sort of actions. When it comes to change, I personally think in one's life, uh, that's what I do because your mind is really, it's, it's the epicenter of everything. It doesn't mean that action is not important. It doesn't mean that moving is not important or somatics aren't important, anything like that. But I think a really good mindset can get you a long way, can get you through the hardest times. It can get you into the hardest times. It can get you into deep, dark holes. So I think it's always important to address this. So I'm going to bring it kind of personally to a few things and like habits that I have been doing, but you can of course just think about the things that you know that just keep getting in your way, not even things that are getting in the way, you are getting in your own way by sabotaging or doing the same thing or deciding to make that same decision over and over again. So let me just say, I am somebody who is 
majority of the time on a routine. I like to ebb and flow into different routines depending on where I'm at in my cycle. Sometimes I'm really motivated and I'm really inspired and I'm working a lot. And then sometimes I'm like pulling back. So my, my day-to-day like work life and just life doesn't really look the same day to day. And also I'm an entrepreneur. So obviously I have like a podcast, YouTube, I do content. So my lifestyle is definitely different than just like the every single day, the same, but regardless of the day, I'm usually moving my body. I'm usually eating the foods that I need to. I'm usually not consuming anything like under the influence of anything. I'm usually consuming good content and trying not to have um, like victim mentality conversations with friends and things like that. I have done a really good job of really getting myself out of all of that kind of stuff that really kept me stuck. Like the old story, uh, even binge eating, unhealthy relationship with food, just not taking care of myself, all that kind of stuff. It's an evolution. If you're in any of those cycles right now, don't feel like you are not doing enough. I've been there again. I'm going to explain to you right now. Like I still kind of have to work through cycles, things like that. By the way, I have talked about a lot my teas here, actually. I'm drinking tea today, and maybe I'll talk about my like health stuff, but um, I wrote a lot about that in The Ultimate Globe Guide, which is a book that I wrote and released at the beginning of January. So if you're interested, then it'll be linked down below, or you can go find it at your bookstores. But I talk a lot about my journey, so you are not alone if you're feeling like that. But there's little things, even if you want to look at me like, Picture perfect, and I know you guys, the, the OGs don't, but maybe, I don't know, when you watch somebody who's talking about self-improvement, I feel like naturally you're like, oh, okay, like they know and they are like doing the things, and I am, but some of the things that will affect me are, let's say if I'm going out with my friends and I don't hold boundaries and I don't verbally communicate that I need to get home at a certain time or that I'm not drinking, what I end up usually doing because it's such a fun time going out with my friends and there's so much abundance and there's so many things to do and everything like that, I will have a few drinks and I will stay out late and then that just completely affects not only my mood because alcohol affects my mood, but also the next day, it's not that I don't do anything the next day, but it's just like I'm not at my optimal feeling. And I love to give myself time to go out and have fun with my friends and not be super on my shit all the time, but I, I do feel a lot better when I'm on my shit all the time. Also, I don't know if I've ever really mentioned this, but from time to time, I would say like a few times out of the month, I do consume broccoli. If you guys don't know what that is, then maybe you're just too young. But anyways, sometimes I will consume that. And that's usually when I'm bored. That's usually if like I have like a solo night in and like my work is done and like I just want to listen to music and just vibe out. Like personally for me, I'm not going to like go into too much of a tangent because I don't even want to promote that. It is legal in Canada. I'm also 28, like consume things responsibly, but my body works with that plant. I know some people don't. Um, I've had phases in my life where I have gone in and out of that, but I personally really vibe with that. It, it vibes with me, I feel. I think in general, you just have to be careful with consuming things, whether I think, I mean, I look at alcohol way different than I look at broccoli, but even like alcohol, whatever kind of substance, you just have to be careful, obviously, because you're no longer in a maybe a clear mind. You have to like I don't know. I personally like have like planned consumption, things like that. You, you can't just be consuming things all the time like that, or you can lose yourself. And then also you have to be careful of like, why am I taking this thing or why am I doing this thing? And so I've always been aware, like throughout my life, even when I like look at alcohol, I've never been like a big drinker when it comes to alcohol, because I genuinely have always had the worst hangovers, like the worst. And it doesn't make me feel good for very long. So I've never really been that like type of drinker, but you know, like socially and stuff, I, I always try and do my best to not indulge in these things, especially when I'm going through things, because I think that sometimes it can just be an es escape and I don't like to escape my emotions and my, my issues in life, especially being somebody who's hyper independent. I really don't have that much time to do that. If I start losing myself, then I, I really lose myself. Like I will lose my life. Like I will lose my, um, financial status. I will lose my job. I will lose all of these things. And I've also grown up around addicts in my life. So I have seen where that goes. So I've never really fallen on that side, but I think that no matter what everyone has, their form of addiction in some ways. I, I don't think that I have any sort of active addictions in my life, but I think previously when I was in my early 20s, I would say it was definitely food. Like I had a really 
bad relationship with food and I talk about it kind of in my book not too much it's not like this like big deep dive but I talk about why why I was led to those things so anyways I say all that to say it's really important that I make sure that I'm not like falling too much into like smoking or whatever but sometimes when my mood is a little it's not like unstable it's just like I'm not like motivated for life or this that and I don't have a lot of work like I've done my work I have my podcast recorded I have my everything done and I'm bored especially because I'm like an introvert and sometimes I just like don't want to be like bothered to go out and stuff I will think well I could smoke like it'd be fun because I have a good time when I do that but I know if I do that too much, not only am I going to get in my head about it because I'm like, okay, I got to be careful. Like, I don't want to be like, you know, going down this road, but also like, I do like how I feel when I'm clear minded as as much as I have a great time. Sometimes when I smoke, it's a different consciousness. Okay. I personally think if you do it too much, then you're actually not taking the benefits of what that plant could do for you. And sometimes when I do that, you know, it's crazy because when I heal my relationship with food, body image, got in a really healthy routine, lifestyle, everything. I like my life got better. It's interesting to see how the relationship that I have towards smoking is a lot different. I find that I do get really creative and I actually like take the benefits of that plant versus like vegging out and eating a bunch of shitty food and things like that. But sometimes I'll like get a little craving and order something here and there, but regardless, whatever. There's definitely just... um side effects from smoking that I don't personally enjoy sometimes even if I'm in the best state of mind and one of them being it does affect my sleep I am somebody who literally cannot knock out I can't knock out when it comes to smoking I like applaud people who can maybe I that's probably a good thing because maybe I would rely on it more I can't knock out it also kind of affects my appetite sometimes I don't want to eat as well so like I don't like that The next day, I'm usually okay depending on where I'm at with my mood. But sometimes like if I'm in my luteal phase and I'm like, for some reason I like wanted to smoke, sometimes that's going to mess up my mood and I don't want that. And sometimes you just never know where your mind's going to go. Like I even think about this when it comes to drinking alcohol. Like I am a very fun, like I don't even want to say drunk because I don't get drunk, but like I have a good time. I'm never like emotional. I don't get angry. I don't get chaotic. Like I just have a really, really good time. It just heightens like the state that I'm in. But sometimes you're not always the same person like every single day always. So I mean, I'm sure it's happened in my life where I've drank and maybe I got a little bit more emotional than I like really wanted to or whatever. And I think sometimes that can happen with smoking as well. And I just don't want to even put myself in that stage and then naturally I just sometimes the way that I'm perceiving like smoking and stuff is kind of like like this is not the highest version of me I don't want to be doing this I feel like there's so many other things that I can be doing in my life and like going out and experiencing life and feeling good and I'm really working on my mood that I don't want to mess it up essentially but just because I know what's good for me and I know I don't want to mess things up it doesn't mean that there's still a part of me that kind of craves that and so lately especially when I come into my luteal phase, I kind of have like less energy to go socialize and do things and I'm not motivated. So I'm more susceptible to want to grab that, right? And to like want to do that because it's like, oh, it would be a great day. It's like a gloomy day. I can just chill this, that. But in my life, like I've been telling you guys, like uh, honestly, like I've been watching myself the past six months, but I would really say the past few months when it comes to my mood specifically, I'm like, I don't want to do anything to mess up this. I just don't want to, like, I I don't want to be going on these huge emotional roller coasters. I really want to support myself through my luteal phase. I want to see what I can do. I, I have really not been drinking at all when I go out and stuff like that. So like the past, um, I would say like two and a half weeks, I've been really kind of, you know, making a, a point to not even smoke and to really support myself the best way that I can. But of course, I'm I'm now in this phase of, of the decision. And when the decision is to smoke, when the decision is to indulge in that thing that you know is not really like gonna mess up your life, you have a good relationship with it. You know that you'll trust yourself and you won't really like, you know, get into it. But but the side effects sometimes of the thing that you're currently trying to focus on and heal like heal more of that could be affected this is where it gets a little bit tricky it's like okay now I'm in this like what do I just decide what do I decide so when the decision is having to be made like I would say the past two weeks when I've really been having to like 
think about this. I want to talk about a few things that I've done in order to not do this. And I haven't at all, which is great. And I feel amazing. And I, like, I never rely on this. I don't rely on really anything, even when it comes to food, which is wild to say, because I used to, like I said, I used to have a really unhealthy relationship with food and I could never even imagine there would be a day where I wouldn't be consumed by thinking about what I'm going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner and be thinking about it and counting the calories and, oh, is this going to affect my body or is this healthy or is this not? Or I need to start on a Monday. I never thought that I would ever be able to get out of that cycle and I did. And if you're currently in that cycle, I would suggest getting my book. So the first thing that I did a lot, anytime I had the thought of like, mm, smoke, not smoke, or even if it's like, uh, go to the gym, not go to the gym or eat this food or not eat this food or like go out with my friends or not like those kind of things like anything. Think about the thing that you're currently having to decide, make that decision. The first thing is I, I really slow down and allow myself to think this situation out. We don't give ourselves enough time. We just decide we act on the thing, right? It's an impulse. Oh, I, I want to eat or I want to smoke or I want to drink. or I want to go out like that impulse. So you need to give yourself a little bit of room to actually think. And what I like to think about and honestly, what I like to hyper focus, and this is what I even wrote in my notes, hyper focus on what the wrong decision will lead you to. Okay. So I really like to think about all the ways in which I'll feel like shit. If I do this thing, all of the side effects, all of the things that I'll have to bring myself back up to, if I do this thing, all of the things, like everything, right? So you can think about how you'll feel if you skip the gym, how you'll feel the next day, if you drink, how you'll feel X, Y, and Z. And honestly, I think this is why it's so easy for me to not drink a lot. Even if I do have a drink, it's really not a lot because I know a hundred million thousand percent the way that I'm going to feel the next day. And it's not even worth it for even a second. So like, I just naturally will cut myself off and I'll start drinking water and things like that. But now I'm getting to the point where it's like those little small things, right? Like I want to feel a hundred percent. I don't want to feel just like 70%. I want to feel a hundred percent. This is what I deserve in my life. This is where I'm going to be able to get myself to a better state in my life. I want to feel hundred percent. So I'm going to have to really think about those things that are not going to feel good the next day. I can even think about this when it comes to texting an ex or texting somebody who you've been chasing or somebody who's not good for you, right? Or putting yourself in places where it doesn't serve you. I want you to think about, and this is what I had to do. Think about all of the side effects and all the shitty ways you're going to feel, even when it comes to binging, I, I would do this sometimes. It was hard, right? Because that emotional um, drive to do things, sometimes it just overwhelms you. And I talk about it in my book, that emotional side that really feels like it needs to eat something and regulate. That's what's really happening. Also, in some senses, is like whether it's deep or not, you're, you're doing this behavior because you feel like you need to do it, right? So First, stopping yourself and being like, okay, all the side effects and how shitty am I going to feel if I text that ex and he doesn't reply or, or it doesn't go the way that I want or how I'm going to feel after I eat all that food or my bank account after that or this, that, like really, really think about the consequences of your actions, but also thinking about what drove you to that thing. For me, I would say like the past few weeks, and honestly, this is what happens like when it comes to smoking for me, it's really just a boredom thing. Like, I don't even think about these things when I'm not like bored or busy, things like that. But I, I think about when I was like binge eating and not eating well um, or getting into unhealthy relationships and things like that. It was definitely from this place of like, I felt really alone and sad and like I needed that thing to soothe me, which we're going to talk about what's really going to help you actually not like go into that thing. So it'll help you soothe you. But I really just try my best to hyper focus on all the side effects and the downfall of what will happen if I decide to make the wrong decision. And then I think about, and again, I have to give myself time, give yourself time. I think about all of the benefits and how I'm going to feel if I don't do this thing. I've really been doing this. And I know it's almost like, yeah, we kind of know this, but we don't really do this, right? And I think people will always talk about it when it comes to the gym. Oh, think about how good you're going to feel in the gym, but you don't like, you don't really sit there and think about it. And, and I think it is good when you are thinking about the thing that you're really stuck in when it comes to, let's say I'm going to bring it back to smoking. How will it feel, Alicia, if you decide that, okay, maybe it's your day off, but you're going to go to the island or you're going to walk around. You're going to go to acupuncture. You're going to go chill with a friend at a coffee shop. Like you're going to go out in nature. You're going to do some fun things. Like you're going to be really productive because sometimes when I smoke, I'm very like, not in my head, but like, music. I want to dance. I want to chill. I want to vibe. Sometimes I'll go out and, and like go for walks and stuff like that, but it depends on the vibe that I'm on. But anyways, but like 
how would you feel if, if that was your day? Or if you didn't do that, you, you could edit another video. Like there's always something to do for me as an entrepreneur. There's always something to do, right? And how would you feel when you have the proper amount of, I was going to say energy, but there's actually the opposite melatonin, I guess to fall asleep at a normal, beautiful time? And how would it be to like clean your space tonight and listen to a good podcast and, you know, light a candle or an incense and listen to some music, right? Go on your balcony. You can do all these things without smoking and getting in your bed, doing your journal practice, getting into bed at a decent time, booking a a workout class in the morning and you're waking up in the morning. You're not tired. You didn't mess up your sleep, like all of these things. And you did that from a, a normal, natural energy system, right? Like you're healthy. You didn't need any sort of substance to do any sort of thing because you can do all that. You can be as creative without that. I always try and tell myself that too. Like I really focus on my beliefs when it does come to things because I'm not perfect. Right. And I will do things from time to time, but I always try to remind myself, even when it comes to drinking, like I can socialize without drinking. I don't need it. Or I can be creative without smoking, or I can do all these things without doing that. I think it's really important that you tell yourself that, but I always try and focus on how I'll feel if I, and again, let's say like go to the gym, you're going to feel so fit and so good. And you're going to look at yourself like that it girl. And, you know, like thinking about your self concept and your confidence and, you know, like the outfits that you're going to feel good in and just how you're going to look and feel and all that kind of stuff and how you're going to even act and be from this place of you waking up in the morning and having this morning routine, you're going to feel, oh, it's going to be so good. So think about all the benefits and all the amazing things and how even when it comes to like binge eating and stuff, and I know it's way deeper than what I'm even saying. Okay, I get this. Like it's deep, but it's also like you can do it. Thinking about your gut health, thinking about how you're going to feel in the morning when you don't go to sleep, binging a bunch of food, how you're going to feel knowing you saved money because you didn't waste all your money doing this like, you know, binge because you will spend a lot of money doing that kind of stuff. Like really think about how you're going to feel and how your body's going to thank you for supporting it and allowing it to rest and digest and heal and just be calm. You really have to remind yourself of these things. And the last reminder that I always remind myself of is when I am having to make those decisions, it's not going to be comfortable at first. So there's going to be a period of when I am thinking about the bad and I'm thinking about the good and I'm going to have to decide even when I like think about the good, like it's still going to not feel the best to decide to pick the good, even though that's wild, right? It's actually wild to think that like, it's not going to feel good to choose yourself, but in that moment, it's not going to feel the most comfortable, but you can get over that hump. And so I always have to like remind myself like out loud, I'll tell myself, okay, it's going to feel really uncomfortable because you really want to do it right now. Cause you're really bored and you want to like, it's going to be fun to that, but like think about the things that will actually feel better if you don't do this. And like, just, you're going to get over this hump and then you're going to feel so happy that you did it. I also think about this when it comes to writing my book, when I was writing my book, there was just definitely times I wasn't motivated, but writing your book every single day or like touching it every single day is way better than you just taking some time off because then you have to get back into the flow and it's harder to get into. So you kind of have to get over that a little like resistance that you might have at the beginning. And the way that I get out of resistance is taking action, like baby steps. Like literally I did this one time when I was trying to like do this decision-making like a week and a half ago or something. Cause I was like really going back and forth with it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to like grab it, but I'm going to go do this one thing first. And then I'm going to come back to it. Like I'm going to do all the things that I need to do before I do that. And that's actually one thing that I like to do regardless of if I'm actually deciding to do this or not, or anything else in my life when it comes to like, not the healthiest habits or whatever. It's not really bad habit. I don't look at it as bad habit because then I think it just spiral into that. But I will make sure to be responsible and do the things that I need to do on my to-do list. Like we're not, I'm sorry, but like we need to be mature. And if we're going to go party, if we're going to go smoke, if we're going to go indulge in things, we need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and we're making, we're taking care of business and we're doing the things that we need to do. So we need to do that. And so even when I'm deciding to do these things, I like to use action as a buffer. And then literally when I did this one thing, like I was like, I don't even know. I was like finishing up some content because I figured I would might as well do that because I was like ready that day, even though I didn't really need to do it. I was like, let me do an extra step of something to feel productive and then I'll decide. 
And then of course, as soon as I did that, I was like, I don't need this. Like I'm done. So those are like the mindset shifts that I like to think about like in those moments when I'm about to decide, but how you're really going to no longer be in these cycles. At least for me, this is what's really helped. And this is what I've been doing every single day and night. And this is something that I'm not going to go back on, but this is huge. And this is basically your action piece. And this is going to really dictate whether you're going to ever really have strength to do these things and to get out of these cycles, which is to rewrite your story. Okay. So let's talk about rewriting your story. You live out a story about the way you look at yourself, um, the way you are as a person, um, whether you are somebody who takes care of themselves or not, somebody who smokes or doesn't smoke, drinks, doesn't drink, is an introvert, extrovert, all these things. You have a story about everything you identify as who you identify as. It's all good. It's fine. But there's a lot of stories that you have towards yourself, especially when you are in cycles that are not favorable. And sometimes they just keep you stuck because you're not really focusing on a better story. And you also have stories about how people show up in your life. You have stories about men. You have stories about women. You have stories about how hard relationships will be or how easy they will be or how much money you can make or how hard it is to make money or how you can make money. You have a story about everything. This story plays out in your life and you act out of this story and you manifest out of this story. If you don't believe in manifestation, fine, whatever. But let's bring it back to you deciding to make the right decision or the wrong decision. The identity and the story that you're currently living out when you are somebody who is not making the right decision in their lives, it's not favorable. It's not loving. It's not strong. It's not confident. It's not the best version of you. And so especially when you're trying to change a habit or change something in your life, but let's just like focus on us, right? Like self-care and self-love. You want to look at yourself as somebody who no longer negotiates things, who no longer sleeps on themselves, who no longer decides to make the wrong decision, who no longer doesn't give herself the option to think about whether this decision is going to be good or bad because that's what you're doing, right? You're somebody who gives yourself a chance to negotiate. And maybe if you're not even playing out that story, and by the way, our stories are very subconscious, so it doesn't mean that you like actively know that you're even playing this out, but you could also just not be living out of story right now of, you know, you're somebody who loves to go to the gym or you're somebody who loves to do their self-care routines or somebody who enjoys going to sleep early or somebody who enjoys to have boundaries with friends or somebody who really only talks to men who want to move things forward. Like there's a lot of things that you aren't really even focusing on. And so every single morning, what I do is I'm constantly rewriting my story about who I am and how I show up for myself. Firstly, always. Okay. Always, always, always you. And I've made this mistake of like when I want to manifest like a new like thing in my life or change the story about things, which changing your story is basically changing your beliefs as well, whatever. But Sometimes like I'll think about, like I say, if I have a relationship issue, I'm like focusing on that first. I think first and foremost, always just focus on you and then you can like rewrite other stories and stuff. But let's talk about us in this episode. You really want to have a morning practice of doing this. Now, why it's important to rewrite your story in the morning is because (laughs) you are faced with decision every single day in the morning to be the old version of you or new version of you. Now, if you like the way everything is going in your life, then you're going to keep persisting in the habits and the thoughts and the beliefs that you hold about yourself and life and whatever, and you keep going on with your day. But a lot of you guys aren't happy with certain things in your life. And so if you aren't happy with the thing that's happening in your life, you need to look at it in a new way. And the way you're going to do that is in the morning actually taking time to look at it in a new way because you aren't just going to automatically look at it in a new way. You can remind yourself here and there, but you have to like actively change the story. And so this is what I do in the morning first thing. Actually, what I usually do is I play like an Abraham Hicks video and or like somebody who talks about self-concept, law of attraction, manifestation, that kind of stuff, because that just gets me in the vibe. Whatever you believe in, whatever works for you. Sometimes I think that's helpful to get your mind on the right path if you struggle with even like thinking good thoughts like if you're in a really low place and I would even suggest maybe just like turning on like that podcast or something as soon as you wake up in the morning or affirmations as soon as you wake up in the morning and then like until you get to the point where you're sitting down and journaling then you go into journal but that is going to be the first thing you do and I want to read out just like a few affirmations so you can kind of like get a gist of 
some of the things that you can maybe think about when it comes to writing um, your new story. So some of them are, I love taking care of myself every single day. I enjoy my morning routines and my night routines. I am somebody who prioritizes rewriting and living out her new story. And like, this is really good to think about. It's like when it comes to habits, what you want to be writing and thinking about and like looking at yourself as, as somebody who likes to get up in the morning and journal to rewrite their story. Like you have to start with that step before you even get to likes to go to the gym or like wants to go to the gym. It's like you have committed to going on this journey or you are somebody who likes the idea of changing their mindset about the way things happen in your life or you are somebody who is willing and excited to change your story about men or about money, about all of these things. I think that those are the first kind of steps. Another one is I am that girl who chooses to care about her mind, her body, her soul, instead of wasting her time partying, smoking, talking to people who don't serve her, things like that. I love being clear minded and focused throughout the day without, you can fill in the blank, binge eating, smoking, drinking, going on social media, anything like that. I love to cook healthy foods for myself to support my digestion, my skin, my overall health. Going to the gym is easy for me. I love romanticizing it and being that girl who has an amazing body and loves herself. I no longer engage in behaviors that harm my body or my soul. I am on a clear path to the highest version of myself. I no longer identify with the old story anymore. I no longer spend time engaging with men who do not live the same lifestyle that I do. I date men who prioritize their health, their relationships, their friendships, who want to provide for me. I am attracted to men who are consistent and reliable in my life. I make money off of my talents and my passions. Work gets to be fun and aligned. I never stress about work because there's nothing to stress about. My friendships are beautiful and supportive and real. People respect my boundaries. They understand my boundaries. I have the most fun friendships. We can go on and on, okay? So this is what I'm focusing on in the mornings every day. And God does it feel amazing. It feels so good to think about yourself and think about people, places, and things and what gets to happen in your life in a positive way. And now this leads me into the next few things I'm going to talk about. And it's basically under a category of strict boundaries and routines. So I've already kind of talked about this. If you want to be a new person, if you want a complete 360 of your life, if you want new relationship, you want people to show up differently, if you want to feel better, if you want new habits, if you want to be that girl, you need to commit to an entire rebirth. You have to like rebirth yourself. You have to literally like you're done with being that old version of you. Okay. The way you're going to be done with being the old version of you is first commit to that new story every single day. And I do this at night as well. And I'll talk about some other things, but committing to rewriting your story because you are no longer going back to that old story. And the way you go back to that old story is not persisting in a new story every single day. And, you know, this is something that's really like hit me like a ton of bricks kind of like the past like month is really realizing that I'm done. I'm done not prioritizing rewriting my story every single morning. I'm done not looking at certain things in my life, like certain habits, like whether that's wellness, move my body, whatever, as negotiable. These things are no longer negotiable in my life. They're just not. Why? Because I know when I'm not on this, when I'm not doing these things, I go into the old story and I'm not even looking at it as a way of like, oh, I feel like I'm in a jail cell. Like, oh, I have to do all this work forever and ever and ever and no one else does because I've had a really unhealthy relationship with discipline in my life. So I know what it feels like to tell myself that I have to do something like every single day. But it's, it's, I'm doing this because I deserve this. I'm doing this because I feel better doing this. I'm doing this because I'm so sick of feeling like shit. And if I want something new in my life, if I want to feel better, if I want to stop crying and if I want to stop being the victim, I'm going to have to decide to show up differently in my life. And these habits, these things are enjoyable for me personally. Rewriting my stories, amazing. Speaking to myself kindly is amazing. Reminding myself of what I get to have in my relationships is amazing. And you know what isn't amazing? Waking up every single day and being like, hmm, what's my mood like? Am I gonna have a complete destruction of my day because my mood is shit and the story that I'm playing out is shit? Or 
is it going to be an uphill battle and I'm going to try and do my best? Or third option, which I'm doing now, is deciding how my day goes by first rewriting my story and, and then having my habits follow that. It's so much nicer to wake up in the morning and decide where your attention and your time and your energy gets to go versus falling victim to all of the anxiety and the depression and all of the shit that happens from a lack of focus on your new story. And now, listen, I understand that like luteal phase is a thing and like depression and anxiety, like some of these things, like I'm always talking about ebbing and flowing and stuff for sure. But coming back to why I've been feeling so good, even in my luteal phase is I am actively deciding every single morning to focus on these things. And even though it doesn't mean every single day I'm 100% motivated, like today I wasn't really like that energized and this, that. And there's always things that come up in my life that are manifestations of the old version of me that I still have to deal with and I will get triggered by. But I just remind myself it's just the old version of me and like the old version of whatever has been coming up in my life. But I still feel so much better by directing my mindset and where it goes every single day. Now, I have done a lot of journaling. I always do it. I talk about it all the time. Like I go through periods of like strictly journaling every single morning, da, 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 da. And then sometimes I will fall off. But usually if I fall off, it's more because like I'm I'm actually really good. And I'm usually supporting myself in other ways. Like I'm never really falling off per se. But I think sometimes why I have gone through those times where I've, we can quote unquote say falling off is because sometimes I will be looking at rewriting my story, let's say, or journaling or whatever I'm doing as like a means to an end. So obviously you're going to fall off things when there are means to ends. But what I have been really realizing, like the, the message that's so clear to me is this is the way of life now. This is your life now. You want a new reality. You want to be healthier, Alicia. You want to have better relationships. You want to have more money. You want to have success. You want to have alignment. You want to have these things. Yes or no. What that requires is you committing to the new story. It's not even committing necessarily to the habits and all these things. You skip all that stuff because that will come. That will come in alignment from you committing to the new story. You deciding that you are no longer being the old version of you. And I'm done with that. I'm done with the ebbing and flowing of what gets to happen in my life. And I don't mean I'm expecting life to be perfect because I know there's a lot of things that are in my current life right now are, are from my past self, right? The way people show up, the stories that are being played out. And I have to work through those triggers. But even when I'm working through those triggers, I feel really strong. I feel really good. I, I feel like I'm not getting broken down all the time because I know how this goes. And I'm, I'm here for the long run. I'm here to feel good. I'm here to, even when I feel like shit on the days that like, okay, my mood is not the best. I'm not going into the old story of being like, okay, well, my life is a mess and I'm doomed and oh my God, I'm just going to wait and sit around and wait for myself to get better. No, I'm going to continue to show up for myself. Even when things aren't feeling the best, it's okay to not have perfect days, but even on those imperfect days, what are you doing? What narrative are you living out? And that's the thing that I'm focusing on a lot right now. And I'm feeling really good in my life. And I have had a few days where I'm like, meh, like meh. There's a few days where like certain like, like old manifestations kind of like popped up, but I'm like, I'm so beyond, like, I know how this goes. I can either react the way that I always do. I can either allow it to spiral me down. I can allow it to affect me all day, or I can decide to choose a new story. And the way that I decide to like make the right decision and and have a better like outcome in my life or that day or that habit is to make sure that I'm being on a strict routine. I hate using the word strict because it doesn't feel like strict. It actually feels very like I'm motivated to do it, but is to really support myself through a morning practice. Okay. So I'm like, I did a whole tangent, but coming back to morning practice, this is what I do every single morning. It's non-negotiable. Now, other things that I do, and I talk about this a lot, I have always been good at this, but again, I think there's always room for improvement, especially when you are wanting to like rewrite a story and stuff. But I think that like, again, take it from somebody who's done a lot of self-development, self-work, changed her life in a lot of ways, gotten out of cycles. I have tested not doing the work on myself. I have. And I needed to do that because I need to see what works for me as a human and like how much work I need to do and how much support I need to give myself and what I need to focus on. And everyone's going to be different. So even like take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, because I'm sure there's a lot of people who can, you know, 
be around certain people, places and things and not get as triggered as I do um, based off of your past versus mine, right? But I have found there's just gonna be certain things that I really have to limit, like I have to limit certain distractions to a certain like extent for myself. So again, it's gonna be dependent on you, but I know when social media is too much. I know when I'm being activated by the amount of content I'm consuming or people's lives that I'm consuming. Or I know when too much is too much when it comes to socializing and being out with friends. And I need to do what I need to do to limit those distractions so I can create room for me to choose myself every single time. So for me in the morning, like I said, I wake up and I do my journaling. Every day I've been making sure to move my body in the morning, whether it's booking a class, weight training, or walking. The music that I'm listening to is very in alignment to what I want to be in the vibe for. I'm not having conversations and playing into old stories anymore with people, places, and things, which I usually don't anyways, even when it comes to like relationship stuff or I don't know. Maybe we're going to have like a separate conversation about that, but that's usually what I do. And then even I think like the biggest thing for me this summer would be friendships and like boundaries with that. So like I've really communicated with my friends what I'm available for, what I'm not, and just letting people know like I am on my wholesome game. I always am. I am definitely the friend that's like very like wellnessly, very like, oh my God, I have to go home. I have to sleep, this, that, but genuinely like not budging on that. And the most like, easy loving way I feel like sometimes boundaries sound like they're this huge thing and people get so like offended by them and stuff but people really don't like even this weekend I did a like a whole wholesome weekend with one of my friends and I told her I'm like I am not going out I'm not doing any late nights I'm definitely not drinking but if you want to do something during the day then we can and I'm pretty sure she stayed in like the whole weekend as well which I feel like it was like the me effect, you know, which I feel like there was, well, actually there was a lot of things. Actually, there's so many things going on. And it's funny because she ended up telling me there was like this one plan to go see 50 cent at uh, Cabana pool bar uh, on Saturday. And we already had plans and stuff, but like it just had popped up. And for a second I was like entertaining it, even though I was like, okay, I just won't drink, but like, it'd be cool. Like it's a day thing. We could go. And I told myself, like, I spoke out loud. This is what I do. I'm like, you're not doing it. You won't want to do it. You'll be like excited about it for like three seconds and then you're not going to enjoy your it's not even that you're going to enjoy yourself but what I just focused on is how amazing I feel when I am like this wellness girly and going to sleep at a good time and surrounding myself with people who are doing the same things as I am and it's not about like othering myself and being like oh these people are bad because they want to go drink or they want to go party or they want to do this or that like I love that stuff too but in my life I don't want that. And so I just told myself, no, it's like, it's not going to be worth it. Like, it's just not. So anyways, those are the things that I have been doing recently. I think a main takeaway is reminding yourself that it's baby steps when it comes to like deciding, bringing it back to when I grabbed the pen and then I decided to go do what that one thing. And then that prolonged it like prolong, prolong, prolong. Sometimes what I will do though, because I'm a balanced human being, I will like do like planned consumption. So like I plan things versus just doing things on a whim because I think that those are two different energies as well. Um, when you're wanting to do something out of a place of like urgency, it's like what what's going on there. There's something probably underneath that as to why you're even driven to doing that thing and like why like what don't you have in place that allows you to get to a point where you're triggered? I think actually that that kind of comes to back to like the rewriting your story thing. It's like I find when I don't rewrite my story or I'm not focusing on like positive beliefs and stuff, especially in the morning and when I go to sleep and like throughout the day where I'm listening to like affirmations or whatever, I find that yes, like I'm more like easily triggered because I don't have these things in place to support me. And I think a lot of the times, like when you do have all of this like anxiety popping up or you're depressed about everything, it's like, well, what do you have in your life that you, that are supporting you and your mindset of thinking positive thoughts? But a lot of the times it is because like, you're not supporting yourself. Where's your, where's your routines? And I don't even mean just like going to the gym and eating well. I mean your, your mindset routines. Where's your mental diet? No wonder you're getting triggered all the time. No wonder you're getting triggered in your relationship all the time because you don't sit down and write a new story. You're always going to the negative. You're always going to the, oh my God, they don't like me. Oh my God, they're pulling away. Oh my God, this, that, and the third. Like you're constantly spiraling it out. You're in the shower thinking about the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, well, if you want to think differently, then you need to have some structure in your life. So I think that's really big. And I think it just comes back to reminding yourself you are really one decision away from making the right decision because 
when I make that one decision to not smoke or not drink or not sleep on myself, when I no longer say yes to those things, instantly the rest of my entire day is so easy. And on top of that, it feels so rewarding because you made that one decision to say, nah, not today. I'm not interested. I'm not that type of person. I'm not that type of person. I actually really like feeling clear minded throughout the day. I actually really like having my morning routine in the morning, my coffee, my breakfast and momentous in my life and having energy and just also like thinking good thoughts about people, things like that. And my camera is going to die. So I want to quickly speed this up. I mean, it's basically already done. Um, last thing I'll just quickly say though, is just remember to take things one thing at a time. Don't focus on a million stories, a million habits, a million things. The first thing that I did when it came to like even getting myself out of a like really crappy mood about two weeks ago was like waking up in the morning and just playing my Abraham Hicks videos in the morning before I was even doing like real like rewriting my story stuff like I did journaling here and there but like I just like wanted to focus on that first to just get out of bed and then I like focused on being consistent with like every single day no matter what right after my journaling which actually focused on that and then I like moving my body and that's coming from somebody who's like already doing it like 70% of the time but like I'm just like trying to be 100 without being obsessive okay like let's not be obsessive please Last thing, I want to read this quote because I feel like it's just going to end the episode and it's, it's really good. And I found it on Pinterest the other day. It says, July, melt my self-doubt in love and coat my intentions in layers of truth. Soak my discernment in buckets of clarity so I can let go of what isn't mine. Clear the debris from older parts of myself that I've outgrown so I can see the path back to me. Pave new avenues for growth. So we're going to leave that there. Focus on you. You first. Focus on how good it's going to feel to continue to show up and choose you every day and realize that everyone and everything, the universe, everything is just waiting for you to get on board, for you to commit to yourself 100%. So let's do it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.